you're watching this video. I hope that because you have a little bit of interest in the Spanish Bible, and uh, I hope that I can be uh, better inform you of the Spanish Bible and the Word of God in Spanish. Why is the first question you have to look at, and uh, you probably pastor or minister or teach in English, uh, so why should you be concerned about God's Word in Spanish? And that's a good question, and so I'd like to answer that as well before we even get started. Uh, possibly you're thinking about starting a Spanish ministry, outreach, or even a church in your area, and uh, that would be a real legitimate concern for what Bible you are going to use in Spanish. Another thing I thought of was uh, possibly considering being a missionary to a Spanish-speaking country, and you're thinking, well, what, what Bible am I going to use? That's a legitimate concern. Uh, I've been there myself. Uh, possibly you are sending a missionary out of your church to go to a Spanish-speaking country, and you want to help them or encourage them or direct them in that area, and I hope to be able to uh, help explain a little more about the Spanish Bible uh, to you for that reason. And then possibly you reached a Spanish person. Uh, maybe they came into your church. Maybe somebody in your church witnessed to them. Maybe you witnessed to them. And you're thinking, man, I want to give them a Spanish Bible, but what Spanish Bible do I give them? Uh, and so those are some of the possibilities that, that perhaps you're considering uh, the Spanish Bible. You're interested in the Spanish Bible. And uh, I hope to be a help and a blessing to you in that area. These are some of the assumptions that I am making about you that I want you to know up front. I, I am assuming that you believe and only use the King James Bible for English-speaking people. I'm just going to assume that up front. I don't, I don't intend to educate you or, or discuss that real deeply. Uh, and so I hope that you are on page with that. I'm also assuming that you know why the King James Bible is the only Bible to be used in English. I'm just going to assume that up front. I'm not going to try and touch into that uh, or delve into that subject. I'm also assuming that you know why we reject the American Standard Version, New International Version, the New King James Version, and a myriad of other English Bibles. And uh, I'm assuming you have a good foundation of knowledge of that. And there are there's a lot of materials out there that, that you can educate yourself on that. And so I don't really want to go into those areas too much. Uh, I'm assuming you know those. Uh, uh, let me give you a brief history of the Spanish Bible. Uh, first of all, you need to understand a little bit about the, the Spanish Bible, its history. I'm going to go very quick on this. I don't want to bore you or, or bog you down with too many details. But in 1569, the Spanish Bible was started by a man, Casiodoro de Reina. And in 1569, he finished his first work. In 1602, it was revised by Cipriano de Valera. And you'll notice that's why I have those underlined, Reina and Valera. Uh, that is the line of Bibles that is, uh, follows the Tectus Receptus and follows uh, the, the King James Bible and is an accurate line for uh, the Spanish Bible. 1865, there was another revision. And then in 1909, the Trinitarian Bible Society made another revision. In 1960, the American Bible Society made another revision, and that is the common Bible used in Spanish today amongst independent fundamental Baptists. There, there was also further revisions to the reign of Leda in 1989 and 1995. And uh, it's important to understand the 1909 is referred to as the reign of Leda Antigua. Uh, it, is, it is used by small pockets of independent fundamental Baptists here and there, uh, perhaps even today, I, I'm not for sure. But the 1960 is the common Spanish Bible that I would, I would, I would bet it's safe to say close to 90, maybe 95 percent of all independent fundamental Baptists use the 1960 Reina Valera Spanish Bible. That's the common one. You'll notice here uh, on my chart that uh, I kind of give you two, two of the backs, the bases of that, and I noticed that uh, they're in Spanish, but uh, the texto recibido, that's the received text, and uh, that line runs up there, and then the, the critical text, the texto critico, uh, is the critical text, and you can see uh, a lot of different Bible versions that are kind of based on that. You'll notice the 1909 was a revision that started parting from the received text, and then the 1960 went a step further away from that received text uh, until you get to the 1989 uh, that is just wholeheartedly the, from the critical text. And that's kind of a brief overview and history of the Spanish Bible, those texts, those lines. I know I've thrown a lot of information at you very fast, 
But what you need to remember and understand is the 1960 is the common Spanish Bible that almost all independent fundamental Baptist missionaries uh, and ministries use today. Uh, that you do need to, to remember and understand that. And you kind of look at that and see there. I want us to, to focus our attention for a little bit on uh, some of the, the problems or inconsistencies that personally I have run into from using the common Spanish Bible that everyone uses. Uh, I want to look first at the publisher and who puts out this Spanish Bible that all our independent fundamental Baptists are using in Spanish. Uh, the American Bible Society revised the Spanish Bible uh, in 1960. Uh, and my question that I have to ask this is, has the, has the American Bible Society ever produced a good Bible in English? Um, I, I asked a good friend of mine, uh, we both, we, he used the common Spanish Bible at that time, and, and I asked him that this Bible is put out by the American Bible Society. Yes, that's right. And I said, has the American Bible Society ever put out a good Bible? And he said, no. And I have to scratch my head because I don't understand how, how can we use a Bible that's put out by the American Bible Society and still claim to be King James in our, in our, in our beliefs in English. Uh, here's some of what the American Bible Society has put out. They put out the Good News Translation. They put out the Contemporary English Bible. They put out the Worldwide English New Testament. And they put out the Reina Valera 1960 Spanish Bible. And if any of those were good, it would give us a little bit of leeway to say, well, then, then they might be good. But the fact of the matter is, none of those are good in English. No one would claim, no independent fundamental Baptist that believes that the King James Bible is correct and accurate is going to say that the Good News Translation or any of those English translations is accurate. So with that, we just have to believe that uh, the Reign of Valera 1960 Bible is not going to be any better than those English translations. And, uh, and it's our first red flag that should go up when we look at the publisher and who put out this Bible and who's it by uh, that's important to us. Okay, so given the track record uh, of the American Bible Society, we have no reason to believe that this is a good Bible translation right out of the gates, right from the very beginning. I want to look at the product. I, I won't spend a whole lot of time on the publisher. Uh, you can do your own research on the American Bible Society, um, but it's just, that's what it is. That's who put out the 1960 Spanish Bible, uh, Reina Valera. So uh, let's look at the product of, of this and compare some scripture with scripture. Uh, I want you to see some of the most glaring errors. Uh, this is not exhaustive. I am not going to go through every verse. I literally have been through hundreds upon hundreds of verses comparing Scripture with Scripture. There is a lot of information out there of opinions of this and of that. I'm not, I'm not going to get into those. I, I'm not interested in opinions. I don't care if you like so-and-so and you dislike so-and-so. That's not what I'm looking at. I want to see what does the text say, what does the Word of God say, because that, in the end, that's all that matters. Uh, if you if you don't like me or if you don't like so and so, you know that really doesn't. In the long run, that's not going to make the difference. It's what does the text say and what does it what does it line up with. And so I'm going to take some simple verses for you, and uh, you don't have to know Spanish. Uh, I'm going to keep this on a very simple level, things that were added uh, and things that were, were left out, and very simple, easy things for you to see in English and in Spanish. The first verse we're going to look at is Luke 23, 42. Uh, again, I'm basing the assumption, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that you understand the, the critical text and the, text is the received text. And in Luke 23, 42, the King James Bible says, and he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. This is the thief on the cross. You know the story. And he cried out and he said, Lord, uh, to God. Now, you'll recognize the American Standard Version. 
uh, underneath of the King James, it says, And he said, Jesus, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. They have left out the word Lord. You can trace that back to the critical text. You know, I know, that is a critical text error. Uh, it's, it's something that is uh, very easy to find out. In the 1960, the common Spanish Bible that everyone uses, it has that same error. Instead of, uh, it says, um, Jesus, you can see that word, Jesus, with the little tilde there. And then afterwards, you can see Señor that is crossed out, Senior. Uh, kind of, you might pronounce it like that in English. Uh, that's crossed out because it is not in the text. And that is an error. It is a critical text error. If you want to defend that, you can, but you're defending the American Standard Version in defending that word being left out. The King James includes it because it's in the received text, and every Bible, whether it's in Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, French, ought to include uh, Lord in that verse. If it doesn't, it is following a critical text error, and it is a problem. You can notice that the reign of Leda Gomez has that word, Señor, in there, and you can see that pretty clear. I've highlighted those words for you to make it easier for you to see. You can see here another verse, Acts 9, 5. Uh, you'll know the, the story. Acts 9 is, of course, uh, Saul being saved. And in the King James Bible, we have here, it says, And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And you can see there's a second Lord is highlighted uh, as Paul's as, as as God's response, as Jesus' response from the from the heavens when he appeared to him there on the Damascus road, he said, and the Lord said, I am Jesus, affirming that Jesus is God. And you'll notice that in the American Standard Version, uh, it reads like this, and he said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Uh, it cuts out those words, the Lord. Uh, and it doesn't reaffirm that this is certainly the Lord speaking to him. And it's kind of an attack on the deity of Jesus Christ. And you can trace that through the, the critical text errors. But nonetheless, I want you to notice and understand that the word, the Lord, is left out of those Bibles. Uh, the common Spanish Bible, the 1960 Reina Valera Spanish Bible, it has the same problem. You can see the word Señor highlighted in red and crossed out. That means it's not in that text. And I don't care what language the text is. I don't care what Bible it is. If it is in the King James Bible and says the Lord, and it's in the Textus Receptus, then it ought to be in any language in any Bible. And I found that a problem uh, using the common Spanish Bible. The Reina Valera Gomez said, has that word, El Señor, the second time in there. You can see it's highlighted in the text there. And so you can see that very clearly that, uh, again, it lines up. And again, if you, if you defend the 1960 Spanish Bible on this verse, in this, in this text, then you're defending the critical text. And uh, you're defending the American Standard Version, and, and the majority of those new modern Bibles read the exact same in this passage. I want to look at another verse, 1 Corinthians chapter number 10 and verse number 9. And uh, you can see again here, uh, the King James Bible says, Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also, te also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Uh, you can see the word Christ is in bold letters there. You can also notice that the American Standard Version does not have Christ, but it has Lord. Again, that is not a, that's not a translational issue, that's a textual issue. They changed the word in the Greek text, in the critical text, it says Lord, and in the, the received text, it says Christ. And you can see that same problem in Spanish. I've highlighted that word, Señor, that means Lord. It cannot mean Christ. Uh, it is, that is what the word means. Uh, and then there's another word there, and highlighted in the Reina Valera, Gomez Bible. You can see it's Christ, just like in the King James Bible. And uh, again, these are just some of the, some of the things uh, that we can see. They're obviously not all of them, but some of them that we can see in these textual errors. One of my probably most problematic texts 
is this verse right here, Ephesians 3, 9, uh, and probably the greatest verse to show Jesus Christ in creation. The King James Bible says, uh, and, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. And you know as well as I know that Jesus was involved in creation. And it bothers me when we pick up an American Standard Version and it, it, it did not use those words. It just ends at, For ages hath been hid in God who created all things. It does not have by Jesus Christ. Uh, and I find that offensive. I find that a direct attack against the deity of Jesus Christ. And I find it a great problem uh, in these texts in English or in Spanish. And we find that the 1960 Common Spanish Bible that every, uh, almost every independent fundamental Baptist uses, again, is missing these words. Uh, por Jesucristo. You can see them written right there. I have them crossed out so that you can understand they are not in the text. They're not included there. Uh, and then you can see the Reign of Leda Gomez. It has them highlighted because it is in the text there. And they're not crossed out. And, uh, and that's the way any Bible should read, whether it's in any language. Yet another one that is kind of another uh, one to pick on, and yet a one that is common amongst critical text Bibles, is 1 Peter 2.2. 2. The Bible says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. And then it's all done. That verse ends. In the American Standard Version, you can see there as it reads, As newborn babes long for the spiritual milk, which is without guile, that ye may grow thereby unto salvation. Those words were added to that text based on the critical text air. You can see also in the 1960 Spanish Bible, I've highlighted them for you in red, para salvación. That salvation you can see is very similar to salvation uh, in English. That is the word for salvation. That's correct. And so uh, you can see that that addition to that text uh, is following a critical text reading that is incorrect. It should not be like that. And the Reign of Leda Gomez, you can see at the end, it does not have, you won't find in there at all, salvation because it's not in that verse, uh, just, like in the ninth, in, in, just like the King James Bible, rather. Uh, and therefore, it is not a, a corrupt text that is following the, the corrupted um, Westcott and Hort or critical text or Alexandrian text as you might know them. So those are just some of the things I want I want us to notice about those. Um, and I want us to look at a few more things now. Uh, I want us to look at in Luke chapter number 16, again, a story that you're probably very familiar with. Uh, the man that was in hell, uh, and you can see there the King James Bible says, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. The American Standard Version says, And in Ares, or Hades, uh, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. You know as well as I do, this passage is directly referring to hell. Um, and when somebody takes and puts Ares in the text, uh, it just it, it boggles my mind. I cannot comprehend why you would put the Greek word into an English text, into a Spanish text. That word Ades or Hades is a Greek word. It is not an English word. And, uh, and I, I cannot accept that in an English Bible. Uh, that is a common practice that they're doing with all the new English Bibles to kind of soften the doctrine of hell. And, uh, and you won't find hell mentioned not one time in the Old Testament of the American Standard Version. Matter of fact, I looked up hell in the American Standard Version and it's only used 13 times. And so it is a problem. Uh, you can see that the 1960 Spanish Bible follows that exact same pattern and it uses that word Hades instead of hell. You can see the word for hell in Spanish is infierno. I know that's a little bit longer, bigger word, but I've highlighted it there for you in the text so that you can see it. You look it up in any Spanish dictionary and it means hell. That's what it is. And so Hades, or Hades, 
uh, is a transliteration, and uh, and that should not be in, in, in the Bibles, and that's a common practice that most modern critical text Bibles are doing. As I said, uh, the King James Bible uses the word hell 54 times altogether. It's translated hell 54 times uh, from several different word, root words, but it's 54 times you find the word hell in the King James Bible. The American Standard Bible uses hell, the word hell, which is in in English is hell. I was going to say infierno, but it, we're talking about the American Standard Version. Uh, it uses it 13 times. That is it. You will not find the word hell in the American Standard Version, not one single solitary time in the Old Testament. It is not in there. And so uh, the 1960, we can see, follows that exact same pattern. The 1960 uses infierno, which is hell, 13 times total in the Bible, and not one single time in the Old Testament. The reign of Leda Gomez patterns itself after the King James Bible and also uses infierno, or the word hell, 54 times in its text. And so you can see right there what lines up with what and who's patterning, patterning themselves after what Bibles. And I, I bring all this up and I want you to notice uh, I've patterned, I, I, I used specifically the American Standard Version uh, because I have personally examined hundreds upon hundreds of verses in the Spanish Bible, and it seems like almost every single time that I look at the 1960 Spanish Bible and line it up, it's almost like a carbon copy of the American Standard Version. All the critical text errors that are in there uh, are, are nine, about 99 percent of them line up with the with that Spanish Bible, and so uh, that is a real problem for me. Uh, in English, I stand firmly on the King James Bible. If somebody wanted to come and preach in my church, I don't pastor a church; I'm a missionary. But if somebody wanted to come and preach in my church using the American Standard Version, I would not let them. I don't believe it would be right. I don't want them to confuse my people. If I went to a church that used the American Standard Version, and I wouldn't do so knowingly, and they asked me to preach out of the American Standard Version, I would not do it. I don't believe it's right. And, and because of my stance in English, I cannot compromise and do the same thing in Spanish. I'll tell you how all of this came about. I, uh, I went to the mission field, and I used, uh, when you go to a mission field, you don't know Spanish, more than likely, and uh, all the other missionaries are going to tell you, this is what happened to me, here's the Bible that we use, this is the Bible that you are going to use. And you say, well, I think it might have some problems, and they're going to tell you, I know Spanish, and you don't, this is the Bible you are going to use. And it's very difficult to, to go against that and until you know Spanish well enough to study and know what you're talking about, it's a hard road to plow, plow and you end up using whatever you're given because you don't know any better. Uh, I know that because that's what happened to me. And through years of studying and verse after verse after verse, I've realized that's not right. This Bible is not right. The common Spanish Bible that every almost every independent fundamental Baptist, I should say majority would be the better word, of the independent fundamental Baptist ministries use is, is very comparable to the American Standard Version. And I find that a problem. Uh, and so myself personally, after studying this for years and comparing many Bibles, I have found personally the Reina Valera Gomez Spanish Bible to be the most accurate Spanish Bible that exists. Um, now, you, you, there's, there are a few others. There's other works that people have worked on, and I'm not necessarily against those, but personally I have found that the Reina Valera Gomez is the most accurate Spanish Bible, and it does not have critical text readings in it, and that is my primary concern. And so uh, I, I hope that this can be a help. I hope that it can be a blessing to you. If you would like more information, please visit our website, reinofledagomez.com. We have a lot of English articles up there that will help you. 
And, uh, and if you are learning Spanish or looking to learn Spanish, we have lots of articles in Spanish as well. And uh, you can always contact us through that webpage and ask questions if you'd like. And uh, we'll be more than willing to help and answer uh, all sincere questions of people that are earnestly looking and, and wanting to find out more information about the Spanish Bible. I appreciate your time. I thank you for taking the time to watch this. And, uh, and I hope and pray that the Lord blesses you uh, for whatever ministry you're, you're looking to start or work on in Spanish. And, uh, and I pray that, that you would be able to search out the truth and look for something uh, that would not be based on a critical text and would be an accurate Spanish Bible uh, to be used in your ministry. Thank you.